Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago, and today I'm going to be testing control on the Steam Deck. So this game has been verified for a while, as you can see here. But I don't know when this game got ray tracing support on Steam Deck, so we're going to test both rasterized and ray tracing. We try to get playable frame rates, of course, so when you hit play, the first thing that you'll encounter is, okay, do we use DX12 or DX11? I tested both, as you can see on screen right now. So choose DX11 if you're not doing any ray tracing, load faster on the texture side. Also, there's less stuttering and way less VRAM usage. I think DX11 uses like 3 gigs and DX12 over 6. So my advice for most people is DX11, DX12 only for ray tracing, at least in my opinion again. So let's start with DX11. Welcome to Control. First of all, we're going to try to maintain 60s because a lot of people are claiming that and I like to test those things. So the absolute lowest settings except in those textures and uh, no SSAO, which destroys the visuals in my opinion, but hey. So DX11 just for stability, stability's sake. And as you can see, without SSAO, in my opinion, it looks too flat but it really does help with performance. And the issue that I've been having with this game is when you are on combat and there's destruction and all that, but as you can see right now it's pretty solid, which is always good to see. All right, so time for some real combat with multiple enemies, explosions, effects, all that good stuff. As you can see, we can actually drop below 60 in those situations which I wouldn't say is unplayable it's actually pretty solid the thing is when effects show up it can drop into the 50s well sometimes actually into the upper 40s but that's usually rare actually But you need to basically play on the lower settings, which doesn't even have screen space and occlusion. So that's the sacrifice you gotta make to maintain 60s, otherwise you're going to drop below 60 pretty often. So now the 40 FPS setting, which in my opinion is a good balance, 800p once again, because we don't have an in-between. <laughs> it's either 400p or 800p, so pixels or no pixels medium settings and uh, I'm keeping global reflections disabled. If you put this on medium, you're mostly targeting 30 FPS. So if you put everything on medium, target 30s, at least in the demanding sections. And we now have screen space reflections. That's the biggest difference with this setting, plus the shading and the better shadows. So we're now in the same location. And as you can see now, there is actual reflections, which were missing before. We have better shading as well, and man, they destroyed me. All right, so as I was saying, when it comes to battery life, 90 to 100 minutes is my my wild guess. At least according to, now that I unplugged the charger, to what the charger says. So yeah, one and a half hours, give or take. But it's way better when it comes to visuals. Again, this setting now gives you screen space reflections, better shadows, actual ambient occlusion. So I think the game looks significantly better. And instead of 60, you're playing at 40. So it's optional. If you play, if you want 60s, at least across the board, you gotta sacrifice, again, the reflections, the ambient occlusion. Some people don't care about that, which I respect, but in a game like this, I think it makes a lot of difference. I would just look into 40, use this setting, be done with it. If you don't mind some drops below 40, you can enable global reflections on medium. But I don't think it's worth a performance hit, personally. Oof, that was close. But again, I think visually is way superior than the 6 FPS target with the lower settings. And the other option is to use TAAU, the upscaling, but it's 400p instead of 800p, there's no in-between. 
which is kind of a shame. And we're going to need it when we try to get ray tracing working, which will be super interesting. But again, my advice would be to play it with this setting. And I'm stress testing the game. This area has lots of destruction and effects on screen, plus the enemies. But most places are fine. So I think it's time <laughs> to do a real test and do ray tracing so I can actually see my reflection here and destroy the frame rate. So let's get to it. Now I'm going to try ray tracing. So this one will be pretty demanding. Remember that we're also selecting the X12 to be able to do so. I basically lowered everything to medium to low to here. Global reflections on medium just to have some extra reflections here and there. And on the ray tracing preset is medium again, which includes ray trace reflections. So it replaces all the screen space reflections with ray tracing and the transparent reflections for glass and all that. There's also global illumination, better shadows and debris being ray trace as well when it comes to shadows and reflections. So for performance reasons, we're using only these two, but we're going to need more adjustments. So as you can see with this, also we're playing the game at 540p with the upscaler. And as you can see now, the reflections don't cut off like with screen space reflections. But in my opinion, it's not, a, it's not absolutely necessary. I mean, it's nice to have ray trace reflections. But unfortunately, it's not enough to maintain 30 FPS across the board, especially in combat. I'm going to show you in a moment. And don't even try to enable the other ray tracing techniques at the same time. You're going to have a bad time. So once you get into combat, well, and places with more reflections, this is what's going to happen. You're going to drop frames like crazy, as you can see. So what we need to do actually is pretty simple. Go into the options, display, and disable the ray trace reflections. So this will remove, this will uh, give us screen space reflections again. So no ray tracing on those, but we're going to keep the transparent reflections. So we have reflections on glass and all that, which looks pretty good, but the performance hit is not as big, so that's, why I would only keep this one to at least maintain 30 FPS. So if we now go back and I'll show you the FPS counter as well in a bigger scale, you can actually stay over at 30 FPS. This was the only way I could get somewhat, uh, somewhat ray tracing going without being below 30 FPS. So the only thing that has ray trace reflections are glass and some of these surfaces. But mostly glass, so you can actually see your reflection. So the difference with this than having the previous setting, apart from having better performance, is that you lose those ray trace reflections on things that are not glass, such as the floor, the walls, and all that. So you're back to screen space reflections, but now the reflections on glass actually reflect things, to say it in some way. So would I sacrifice performance for ray traced reflections on glass? No, <laughs> I wouldn't. As you can see, you lose the reflections here. And this starts being screen space reflections. So I don't think it's worth it. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's nice to have ray tracing on the Steam Deck, but you gotta sacrifice the resolution quite a bit. Remember, we're playing at 400p, so half the resolution. On the smaller screen, it's a little bit less obvious, but you can still notice it. So it's nice to be able to do it, but I'll probably tell you, maybe if you have an OLED Steam Deck, it's going to be a bit more stable. But I still wouldn't recommend <laughs> ray tracing on this game, at least not on the Steam Deck. But it's a nice experiment, in my opinion. The thing is, you got to sacrifice performance and resolution quite a bit. And I'd rather play this at 40 or 60, honestly. So yeah. It's been a nice experiment. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. 
And if you have a Steam Deck OLED, let me know how this setting runs for you. I will be super interested to know that because the Steam Deck OLED is super expensive in my country. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.